Nowadays, we can easily say that almost everyone is overclocking their CPU and not only that, or at least it is trying to do that. We know that there is a category of people which knows very good how to overclock a CPU and even when they are ordering a new CPU, now the overclocking capability is a very important feature that it is taken into consideration before buying one. So they always pick the CPU with overclocking in mind. And then there is the category of people who also know how to overclock but they're just afraid to do it or uh, uh, maybe their components are locked and can be overclocked at all. And there is a small portion that still wants uh, to know how it is done. So today with this video, the target are obviously those who are afraid and those who want to know how this procedure it is done practically. But before we do that, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel, also turn on notification and it will be very much appreciated. Now, there's also a category of people who don't care at all, so we don't care for this category. First thing you need to know is that nowadays it's fairly easy to overclock your CPU, especially with the new CPUs and motherboards on the market, these things uh, are pretty easy to do. You just need to keep in mind two very important things when you overclock your CPU. The first one is temperature and the second one is voltage. Now, temperature is very important because technically by overclocking our CPU, the temperature is the one thing uh, which is going to get affected immediately. And obviously we know that uh, a high temperature is a bad thing for our components. So definitely the temperature is the thing that we are going to, uh, to take a closer look at when we are overclocking our CPU. And obviously the voltage is another very important thing when overclocking because on the positive side the voltage is going to give us more stable clocks and obviously is going to give us more room for overclocking. But on the negative side more voltage obviously is going to give us more temperature. So basically these two things are very much correlated to each other. So definitely we're going to uh, to take a closer look at them when we are overclocking our CPU. Because definitely at the end of the day, we want higher speed from our CPU. Uh, that's why we want to overclock, but also we want that overclock to be safe. So technically to be stable and also to uh, not hit too much our CPU. Right then, till now we uh, talked only in theory, so now let's jump into practical things. How we can do that and how easy it is to do it. So basically you can see that my system has an AMD Ryzen 5 3600 uh, CPU. You can see that the CPU base clock uh, is at 3600 MHz obviously, but it can boost uh, up to uh, 4.2 GHz. Uh, with a CPU overclock maximum of uh, 4.3 megahertz, which basically means that um, my system can boost one or maybe multiple cores to uh, 4.2 or 4.3 megahertz for a limited amount of time. And this is one of the reasons why I said at the beginning that it is fairly easy to overclock our CPU because technically the boost speed of our CPU can be a good indicator to tell us the maximum speed at which our CPU can run even constantly with that speed on all cores. Now, obviously not all CPUs are going to be the same. So this means that maybe some CPUs are going to need some extra voltage to get to that speed or even higher. And some CPUs, if you are lucky enough, you can get to those speeds even without changing the voltage of your CPU. So technically this is, uh, this is the best case scenario if you, are, uh, if you are having this kind of results. 
So now what I'm going to do technically is go from 3600 base clock, I'm going to set my CPU to a higher clock on each core or let's say on all cores. And obviously what I recommend you do is go on slow steps with the overclocking because uh, because we don't know how much stable the, uh, the overclocking will be. But uh, again, if you stay within the boost clock of your CPU, uh, generally 99.9% .9 you are going to be safe and you are going to get a very good result even without adding voltage. But um, anyway, keep it, keep it, let's say, slow, uh, slow and steady increase in speed till you get to the speed which you are stable and obviously you are within uh, a safe temperature, let's call it this way. So uh, in this case, we don't risk of damaging our CPU. So first thing you need to know is that to overclock your CPU, there are two ways. Obviously, there is the traditional one, which we are going to use in this video. And that's it by changing the settings in our BIOS. And the second way, obviously, is the way to overclock our CPU with applications with these windows or programs. Let's call it this way. In my case, I can use Ryzen Master, for example, but if you have an Intel CPU, uh, you might have a certain uh, program which you can overclock your uh, your CPU within Windows, but also you have to keep in mind that you have to always keep this uh, application running in the background uh, to be able to get the speeds that you want to get uh, uh, for your CPU. Where, on the other hand, if you change these settings into the BIOS, then those settings are going to stay there until you go ahead and change them. So you don't have to launch uh, any application. You just set the, the setting that uh, you want into the BIOS and that's it. Those settings are going to get applied always when you start your PC. Now, as we said that we want to be safe on our overclocking uh, of the CPU, uh, I'm going to keep it a little bit slow. So first thing, I'm going to jump into the BIOS and set the speed of my CPU on all cores from 3600 MHz, that is base. I'm going to set it first to 4000 MHz or 4 GHz and see what the, uh, what the stability and what the, the performance of uh, that overclock is going to be uh, for my CPU. Okay, we are into BIOS uh, now and depending on the motherboard, uh, obviously the uh, the settings that we are going to change are usually on the overclock tab or maybe advanced tab depending on the motherboard which you use. In my case, uh, uh, my settings are under overclocking tweaker. It depends uh, on your motherboard, so you have to check a little bit with the, the manual of your motherboard, but usually... Uh, what you need to do is go to the overclocking settings uh, and in here you have to change the CPU frequency and the voltage as we have uh, already talked about it. In my case, I uh, can change directly the frequency of my CPU. But in your case, you uh, maybe you have to change uh, the multiplier of your CPU. For example, uh, times 36 or times 40 and so on. In my case, I can open CPU frequency and voltages uh, and I can change that uh, because obviously we need to change that uh, to manual so we can set our own speed. So we uh, first uh, get that to manual and now you can see that I can change the frequency. And as we talked earlier, I'm going to set mine from 3600 to uh, 4000 and then the corresponding voltage. In your case, you might not have the frequency, but you might have the multiplier. So you have to set the multiplier to f from 36 to 40 in this case. And the voltage, I'm going to set it to 1.25 because I think that this voltage is going to be fine for my CPU. And there is nothing else. Just save the settings and we can get into Windows. Okay, back into the windows and as you can see now all my cores are running at 4000 megahertz. You can see it on hardware info and also on uh, AMD Ryzen Master as you can see 4000, 4000 and in here 4000. Well, 
it's three uh, three thousand nine hundred ninety three because um, uh, because the uh, the base clock uh, is at ninety nine point eight and it's not at one hundred megahertz, so that's why uh, it's not at four thousand precise. But technically, it doesn't uh, change anything uh, with uh, that small of a difference. Now, uh, okay, you may think that it's uh, already done and you are good to go. But my suggestion is always uh, this one. You need to test if these clocks with this voltage are going to be stable and are not going to, uh, to get your CPU to uh, high temperatures. And the way you are going to test it, uh, you can do it with uh, uh, you can do it with uh, two methods the uh, first method is running a stress test like uh, ida64 that i have in here and the second method is you go ahead and use your everyday uh, applications or maybe games if you want to game but in that case um, i don't suggest you do that because uh, if the your um, uh, your uh, PC crashes during your work or maybe during your gaming session, then you might lose something. So uh, definitely I suggest you use the stress test because the stress test also is going to be the extreme case uh, scenario for your CPU. So in this case with uh, IDA64 or with another application, it depends which you want to use. You go to tools, you have the system stability tab in here. We stress uh, CPU, FPU and system cache obviously. And obviously you just hit on start and it's going to pack the CPU at 100% usage uh, and uh, obviously the motherboard and ram and so on and i'm going to let it run for at least at least 15 minutes and then we're going to get back and check the temperatures and check if the system is stable or not okay after you have finished your stress test uh, and you saw that the the temperature or the temperatures of your cpu are within spec and by spec i mean uh, it depends uh, on the CPU, but in my case, uh, my temperatures uh, are around 80 C in this uh, stress test. And I consider that to be uh, a good temperature, considering that I have uh, a stock AMD cooler. So basically, uh, the, I consider that to be a good temperature. And also, the after the stress test, I suggest you go ahead and try some different games uh, and see... Uh, and see if uh, that clocks are going to be stable or not but um, I know that uh, with my CPU at 4000 megahertz uh, at my gaming sessions or my everyday uh, usage of the PC the temperatures are going to be well under uh, 70 uh, 70 degrees so uh, the, again the stress test are, uh, is going to be the worst case scenario of, for your CPU so Technically, this means that the ADC maximum is going to be a good temperature again, considering with a stock AMD cooler. Now, what I'm going to do that I know that um, 4000 megahertz or 4 gigahertz uh, is uh, fine for my CPU. Uh, now, I'm going to uh, try uh, to increase the clock because uh, obviously we want more speed. Okay then, so I don't want to make this uh, any longer, so basically you get the idea, you go back and forth into the BIOS by setting uh, your speed and obviously your voltage to be able to get that stable speed within the temperature spec, obviously. And... Um, yeah, at uh, basically at 4.2 gigahertz, as you can see right now, with an increase in voltage of 1.3, my system uh, is uh, stable and also is within the the temperatures that I like to keep it, which basically is uh, under uh, under 80 degrees uh, C. So basically. That's what I want for my system because uh, I need a beefier cooler to go 
uh, to go uh, higher than 4.2 because I can go to 4.3 but I need a little bit more voltage and obviously with 4.3 gigahertz on the uh, on the CPU with the higher voltages I'm going to get temperatures which uh, uh, touch a little bit ADC and go a little bit above but I don't like to do that I like uh, to keep my CPU temperature under 80 degrees but this um, uh, this uh, it's uh, all personal uh, it depends on what do you want to achieve with your CPU or it depends what cooling solution do you have because you might have water cooling solution which basically uh, can keep your CPU cool even at uh, uh, 1.45 volts which uh, this CPU is totally capable of and uh, maybe it can go to 4.5 4 or maybe 4.3 gigahertz i'm not sure but unfortunately for me i cannot test that but anyway what i would like to suggest um, uh, as a last thing when overclocking until you reach uh, the boost speed of your uh, cpu on all cores with um, a certain amount of voltage that your system is going to be stable and under the temperature which you like to keep your cpu you can go let's say fairly easy but when you go over your boost clock um, uh, on all cores or let's say when you overclock your cpu on all cores with um, uh, more speed than your boost uh, uh, clock uh, uh, than your boost clock speed then I would suggest you go a little bit slower, which means in my case, for example, my boost clock speed is at um, uh, 4.2 gigahertz. Uh, so technically uh, up to 4.2 gigahertz, you can go, let's say, fairly easy and fairly uh, quickly. But then if you want to go, if I want to go, let's say more than 4.2 gigahertz, then I suggest you go in a smaller step, which basically means uh, set for example uh, 4.25 uh, uh, gigahertz or 4250 uh, megahertz uh, and then try for temperatures and stability then go to 4.3 and then uh, go to 4.35 and so on so technically over the cpu boost clock i suggest you go a little bit slower with the increasing of the speed of your uh, cpu so basically that's uh, it guys um, as you saw it is pretty easy to do uh, at least in my opinion but maybe you may have uh, another opinion about that but um, yeah anyway if you have any questions if you have uh, any suggestion or if you have uh, any doubts about uh, your cpu and uh, uh, and the overclocking of your CPU, you can let me know in the comment section and I will definitely try to help you guys. And hopefully uh, this guide was uh, helpful for you guys. If so, as always, consider subscribing to the channel. Also turn on notifications so you never miss one of my new videos. And yeah, as always, catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.